Hi guys. I am still trying to get out of here to uh, go celebrate International Margarita Day down here in the second collapse of civilization in Chetamal, Mexico. I get all dressed up in my Sound of Existential Dread t-shirt to get out there and join the cultural embrace of my southern neighbors for International Margarita Day here on this lovely Wednesday, February 23rd, I'm sorry, February 22nd, 2023. And uh, <laughs> just as I was shutting down my computer, I had to stop all the presses, all the presses, because right here, this is not from Medium.com. This is from today's mainstream media from this outfit called Gizmodo. Gizmodo. And I guess they're going to be, you know, we're talking about how blue agave could be going extinct here on planet Earth, so we might not have any more tequila, no more margaritas to drink. But there will be no end of margaritas on the moon. It was right here. Ingenious technique could make moon farming possible. Yes. Lunar astronauts might have to get their overalls ready because the moon could be the next great frontier for agriculture. Hmm. The European Space Agency and Norwegian Lunar Agriculture Company, Solsis Mining, have teamed up on a project to study how lunar soil could be used to produce fertilizer. The project builds upon prior research demonstrating that plants can grow in lunar soil, albeit not very well. One of the main challenges is that lunar regolith, I guess the name of the soil, kind of like caliche, I guess, that lunar regolith lacks certain amounts of nitrogen compounds, a key ingredient in soil that allows flora to flourish. Why don't they just plant red clover like I do? <clears throat> anyway, another issue is that lunar soil gets tightly compact when wet, which creates trouble for plants trying to put down those healthy and strong roots. Yes. To foster plant growth using lunar soil as a resource, the European Space Agency, Solsis Mining, Norway's Geotechnical Institute, and the Center for Interdisciplinary Research in Space are turning to hydroponics in which plants are grown in nutrient-rich lunar rainwater instead of soil. And there you go. They could just capture all the, the rainwater on the moon. You know, just put those big plastic drums up there and catch all the rain that falls on the moon. Or I guess they, if, you know, or just irrigate the, the, the damn moon. Uh, if you don't want to catch all that lunar rainfall for your hydroponics, just, you know, just put some water wells on the moon. You know, and irrigate the moon. You know, all of these naysayers. Yeah. This current research project is studying the best methods of leaching the nutrients out of lunar soil. Huh. The idea is that astronauts can extract nutrients in lunar regolith to create fertilizer 
for hydroparm for hydroponic farming. Yes, these nutrients could be pulled from the soil using a processing plant and then dissolved into water all on the moon's surface. Right here. You, you know, you don't even have to dig a well. Right here. These nutrients could be pulled from soil using a processing plant and then dissolved into water all on the moon's surface. Hmm. The resulting nutrient-rich water can then be pumped into a greenhouse for hydroponic farming. There you go. A crucial part of maintaining a long-term human presence on the moon. Quote, this work is essential for future long-term lunar exploration, Malgorzata Holinska, ESA materials and processing engineer says, quote, achieving a sustainable presence on the moon will involve using local resources, you know, such as local rainwater, local groundwater, you know, all of those streams and lakes, and gaining access to nutrients present in lunar regolith with the potential to help cultivate plants. The current study represents a proof of principle using available lunar regolith stimulants opening the way to more detailed research in the future." Close quote. The study, which has a budget of roughly $106,000, began in December 22 and is expected to last until December 2023. So let's ask a, uh, let's ask, I don't know, two questions. We're going to Google two questions. How much water is on the moon? <clears throat> All right. Here we go. How much water is on the moon? Based on remote observations, uh, blah, 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 the lunar poles have over 600 billion kilograms of water. That is enough to fill at least 240,000 Olympic sized swimming pools. There you go. Right there. Just melt the lunar poles. And uh, which kind of leads to the next question. Uh, how much sunlight does the moon receive? One side of the moon is always facing the earth and the other side is always facing away from the earth. Yes, so on the surface of the moon, I guess on the dark side, you would receive 327 hours of darkness, whatever that means. All right, so half the moon, uh, you're going to have to get some grow lights. And then, of course, we have this one uh, never mentioned in the article. What is the temperature on the moon? Daytime temperatures near the lunar equator reach a boiling 250 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 120 C, while nighttime temperatures get to a chilly minus 208 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as minus 130 degrees C. So there you go. So what is that in Fahrenheit? 380 degrees Fahrenheit between sunup and sundown, or is there sundown on the moon? So I don't even know what they mean by nighttime temperatures. Is it, so does that mean that the side of the moon facing the sun is 250 degrees Fahrenheit 
Huh. And the other side is 130 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 100 and, and 208 degrees below zero. Anyway, it's a little unclear. Um, but we will see how what they're going to say about this. Is it too cold to live on the moon? There are apparently pits and caves on the moon where the temperature is about 63 degrees Fahrenheit, making human survival possible. Yes. All right, and uh, obviously Humpty Dumpty Tribe has something to say about this. What does Humpty Dumpty Tribe have to say? I don't understand why the new Moonians don't just eat the green cheese the moon is made of. Who needs vegetables with all that free green cheese? <sighs> Jesus. All right, guys, I really am getting the hell out of here after, after that. Uh, I'm off to celebrate International Margarita Day. And uh, get back in a reasonable state of mind. Bye, guys.